You may have seen some of these memes before, where people claim they forced a robot to watch a thousand hours of something, and then from there asked it to write its own version. If you aren't familiar, the idea behind these is that someone has essentially trained a computer program to write movie and TV scripts, and the results are entertaining just because of how stupid they are. I'll read out the beginning of this Batman one so you can understand what I mean. Batman stands next to his Batmobile and uses his Bat computer. He's sometimes Bruce Wayne. Sometimes Batman. All times orphan. This is now a safe city. I have punched a penguin into prison. Alfred, Batman's loyal battler, carries a tray of Gotham. Eat to dinner, Mattress Wayne. Now it's hard to say if these scripts were truly written by a computer, but the idea was compelling enough to get me thinking. Could I force a bot to read a thousand hours of NCA English essays and ask it to write one of its own? Okay, but before we get into that, how does this all work? This trend takes advantage of the hype around artificial intelligence or AI, which if you aren't familiar, your teacher's favorite website will tell you that it's intelligence demonstrated by machines as opposed to natural intelligence displayed by animals, including humans. It was it's nice that we got the mention there. Usually what we mean when we talk about modern AI is something called machine learning. Granted, I am definitely not an expert, so the following explanation is very heavily simplified to my understanding. Hopefully you get the gist. Machine learning is the study of algorithms that improve themselves through experience. Simply put, you give a machine an input like a picture, text, or any data really, and you ask it a question about your input that it will answer with an output. Okay, so that, that is pretty confusing, but let's try to put it into an example. Imagine you have a bunch of pictures of cats and dogs. You input one of these pictures into an AI model and you ask it, is this a cat or a dog? The model will output its best guess and a probability for how certain it is, which will probably be pretty rough and inaccurate at first. However, the model will then adjust weights in its algorithm based on whether it was correct or incorrect. From there, the more photos the model sees, the more accurate its guesses will become. Over time, the AI will begin to understand mathematically what it is that makes a photo of a dog a photo of a dog. So much so that, in theory, it could eventually learn to create its own photos of dogs that don't even exist in the real world. We see this as artificial intelligence because it's a computer learning to imitate human intelligence, like our ability to identify objects or depict things through artwork. This sounds quite complex and futuristic, but the fact is you already use AI every day. Every time you do one of those I'm not a robot forms where you have to select all the pictures of a school bus, you are training an AI to identify a school bus. Also your Spotify recommendations are usually pretty accurate and this is because Spotify uses an algorithm that understands you. They understand patterns of music taste and they can predict what you will like by how you fit into that. And if you're confused how you suddenly became a good photographer in the last couple years, there may be a reason for that. Your phone takes amazing pictures with a tiny cheap sensor, not because you have an amazing eye and attention to detail, but by capturing multiple exposures at once and stitching them together instantaneously. Or you know there's face app which you might have used to make your mates look old or fat. How does this all relate to writing an essay? Well the same principle can be applied. You feed an AI model with enough pieces of text and eventually it will learn how to make its own. So if we're going to make a bot read some essays, we'll need to get some ready. I went ahead and downloaded all the visual text exemplars from the study time website. Next, ideally we want to convert these into text documents. I wasn't too keen to sit down for three hours typing out handwritten essays, but luckily for me, Preview on macOS now has a feature that lets you copy text from images, which is actually another example of AI working in the real world. This did require a bunch of tidy up though, mostly with formatting. Like most AI, it's not always accurate and makes mistakes that a human probably wouldn't. Alright, we've got our content, but now what can we do with it? I was a little too keen to force a bot to read a thousand hours or something, and I went hard on the first step without even looking ahead to see how feasible this would actually be. And turns out, it, it isn't. The idea I had in my mind from these memes is that it's just as simple as inputting a bunch of text about something into an AI, and the AI will just spit out its best imitation in one go. And maybe this could be the case if you were to train your own model from scratch, but I am really not qualified to do that. 
All the applications that are publicly available work more like predictive text. They're far more in-depth than predictive text that you have on your phone, but functionally it is very similar. You start a sentence and the AI finishes it for you. Fortunately though, I myself ended up reading about a thousand hours of essays just in the process of making this video and compiling them. So if I need to feed the bot prompts to keep it on track, I think I'm more than qualified at this point. I ended up choosing the web application right with Transformer. This uses a few different AI models, including GPT-2, developed by OpenAI. From there, I put in my essay topic and my visual text of choice to give the bot some context. And together, we created what can best be described as the essay your teacher told you not to worry about. Analyze how controversial ideas were presented to challenge or reinforce your views. In the film, Shrek, directed by Tim Burton, Shrek is an innocent boy who accidentally kills a lion and is condemned to life on Earth as an ogre. The idea that Shrek is an evil ogre is controversial, because it is said that Shrek is misunderstood because he is the only one who can truly harm a lion. The film challenges your preconceived notions of what it means to be an ogre. The lion is the symbol of justice for Shrek, and he is punished by being placed in a pen with all the other animals. Burton uses camera angles to reveal the true meaning of the act. Shrek was told that the lion was the evil that killed his donkey. The music score reinforces the situation by playing an aggressive version of the song The Lion King. It is in this scene that the audience learns that Shrek is misunderstood and begins to see the true meaning of who Shrek is. Shrek is condemned by the other ogres because he killed a lion that did not deserve to. Burton shows this by cutting back to a scene from a previous film where Shrek is playing ball with another ogre. It reinforces the idea that Shrek has been punished for his crimes because the other ogre is still playing with his ball while he has been sentenced to life on Earth. It challenges viewers to examine their own perceptions of the world and their own behavior because it tells us that not all ogre behavior is wrong. Lastly, the film uses flashbacks to demonstrate the depth of the relationship between Shrek and Fiona. Burton has Fiona visit Shrek in prison where she tries to convince him that he should become a good ogre. It challenges us to reflect on what happens when we let ourselves be manipulated by others. Fiona's relationship with Shrek is a major theme throughout the film, and Shrek is ultimately rejected by her. Her actions make the audience question the legitimacy of her relationship. To conclude, Shrek is a film that demonstrates the power of storytelling to challenge controversial ideas. It inspires viewers to question their own beliefs of what good and evil means.